Here we are looking at a kind of a comprehensive kit that just about has everything except the kitchen sink. Uh, the uh, most complex part of the kit sometimes is the zip-up bag that contains your kit. And that's where many of the commercial type kits maybe uh, uh, produce these complex packages with all kinds of zippers. Uh, these things aren't going to be in, an or in their order of importance, but nonetheless uh, uh, they'll, they'll be mentioned. Now the first big thing about many kits, my view of, of generally a kit is that it should address the issue of how much better will I sleep tonight, how much easier will it be for me to get the water I need. Those are the first two things any type of survival kit should address. Uh, what, what in it helps you try to stay comfortable? Your means of lighting a fire, your means to protect yourself from the elements, and so on. Uh, then comes the medical issue. Sometimes these kits are very heavy on medical uh, uh, aids, and uh, 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 you, you sometimes find that the bulk of the kit is made up with an awful lot of, of first aid equipment. Well, I think basically you should train yourself to be as independent of first aid materials as possible and not sort of be wishy-washy that you hurt yourself and you'll patch up after. Now talking about patching up, there are steri strips. The older kits, these, these things are exquisitely sticky and they close wounds. Older kits would have butterfly bandages. We used to make our own until steri strips came on the scene. And then there's a sort of various pads that Ideally, they should not stick to your wound when they're used to cover up a bleeding wound and you have to bind things on tightly enough that the bleeding stops and when all stops and the knitting action begins, you have to change these things because they will start to smell after a while. And so you want to be able to take them off without re, re, uh, uh, restarting the bleeding process. So that's what most of these things are, telfa pads or or medical sponges or bits of cloth for wiping up wounds to be able to do see what's going on underneath the injury. This kit has a selection of moleskins to be used on the feet. Some are pre-cut to, to put over um, uh, sore spots of the feet. And I would say that you should work out that if you're having a problem getting blisters and so on in your footwear, you should be addressing how you manage to, to uh, deal with that before you come on a major trip. That is, if you're getting blisters and painful feet, uh, that's, that, that should have been worked out before you went on your trip. More medical stuff. Providone iodine solution, I imagine that's for extensive burns. Then there's towelettes of various sorts. Expensive terminology. Benzoyl alconium chloride antiseptic towelettes. Well, there's a number of those. I prefer to wash with clean water and then use the polysporin. I notice there isn't any polysporin in this because a lot of the, how expensive it might, must be. Uh, there is a lot of um, tef Teflon, Telfa pads, fortunately. And then they have biohazard, which means they include a the uh, rubber gloves. I mean, I, in my situation, I've spent 40 some years working with large groups and I've never really put on rubber gloves to handle first aid purposes. Some people will include these mylar blankets. I must warn you that the people who make these seem to give you a size of a regular blanket, which is neither here nor there. It should be three times as big right off the bat so that you've got something decent to work with. And there is some kits even contain a little headlamp. Well, flashlight has its place, but on the darkest night of the year, I still see a million times better than a blind man. Um, you should be so well trained that the issue of having a flashlight is a luxury, not, not a necessity. Uh, then whatever type of, of uh, some compasses are this small, I'm particularly partial to a rather expensive compass that is miniaturized version of the real thing in the sense that you can really navigate well but the most fundamental simple compass but the thing is you may have a compass but you better know how to use it effectively when when uh, 
a serious navigation problem occurs. If you don't have a mirror elsewhere, this is an excellent signal mirror for, for making sure you have that for eye injuries and for signaling. Uh, a highly developed, astounding whistle, futuristic, uh, scientifically designed whistles to be extra loud. Here I have these tiny little pencils. If you go to West Edmonton Mall, you'll find places where they sell these so that you can write your last will and testament. Of course, there should be a small booklet in here. It's foil for some reason. Well, you might invent uses for the foil, but it's usually found in other kits. So there's usually a packet of duct tape. Uh, little roll of, of wire for repair and for um, snares, candle, a metal rod that you've taught yourself to be able to use as if it were matches. You should be able to light your candle with your rod. If you train yourself and you get that good, then nothing will bother you. A uh, good, uh, maybe two or three arm spans of very strong paracord. In this case, for compactness, I've removed the string from in the middle. And many kits seem to carry these, these uh, uh, ties. I guess you use them for lashing in a certain way. Uh, they're, they're usually included, I guess, because they're so cheap. Kind of foreign to my, my sphere of, of action. Uh, small pair of scissors for small snipping, the foldable ones, it can be quite compact. And then there is the smaller, more portable version of the scissors that cut pennies in half. And then, and then there is the tweezers, and you might be surprised that these tweezers may cost up to almost $10 in some places. And this might be a cheaper version, uh, carried in a very kind of a bulky pack, but tweezers, you need them. This is all, I like to have about five times as much safety pins as this particular kit included. Also throw in a pretty strong mosquito repellent. Then comes the type of, of towelettes that are very compact and when you open one of these I'm really impressed with how large a, uh, a package you come up with provided you can break into it in time, but they're, they're, uh, they're, they're uh, such a small package and such a large piece of material for the purposes of bandaging maybe or for whatever purposes a small towel or rag is useful for. And I don't mind carrying the tape here. Usually on my knife I may have a few meters of electrical tape and so on as an initial tape but most first aid tapes have no stretch to them because if you use a stretchy tape, you're apt to really cut off circulation. Well, here you can monitor the amount of pressure that is put on your wound through the um, uh, first aid adhesive tape. And then a few, for the compactness of the kit, they produce a, a elastoplast type bandage that's way smaller than normal. But I would go for the larger ones because they're so handy for tying on bandages and so on. And when you zip all this up, uh, to me, this would have to be a kit. This size of kit would have to do a, a dozen people, but I wouldn't be carrying some of the items that, that an inexperienced person might figure all of these items are almost indispensable. But the kit that I've carried that fit in my shirt pocket met all my needs for 45 years.